Hi, I want to talk today about a new polyurethane uh, glue-on shoe, which is called Iron Block. It's made by Perletti in Italy. It's a very tough polyurethane and you have these different sizes. So I'm just going to run through what you need to put these on your horse. So first of all, you choose your size. There is a three, a two, a one, a zero, double zero. There's hind shoes, which is a rarity for glue-on shoes. Then you put on your favorite um, gloves. It's always good to wear gloves when, you, when you're when you gonna do glue-on jobs. So I like these, these glass workers gloves. You know, they're very, they're very sensitive. You can really have a good feeling with them and they protect you pretty well. Not totally, but you don't sweat in them. That's a nice thing. Then what do you need? You need to trim your horse. That's obviously. Um, here is my favorite pair of nippers. It's made by Joseph Huber. Then I have a favorite type of rasp. This is the Fiat rasp from Germany. But you can also use, and this is very useful, one of these um, uh, battery-driven grinding machines with a special, um, this is a special disc and it's ventilated and it's made by Fiat, so they're, they're very effective. A couple of sanding blocks, a little a little marker and then I always protect the coronary band with some regular duct tape. You need a heat gun because you heat you need to uh, heat the shoes a little bit just to get that little manufacturer's coat off and you also often need the heat gun when your the feet of your horse are humid so as to get that little bit of humidity out of the surface of the hoof capsule because most glues but while setting, they heat up a little bit and then they would drive out this superficial humidity out of the hoof capsule and make a perspiration layer between the glue and the hoof capsule. You don't want that. Then you choose your favorite glue. You can use any glue you want, a metacrylate or a polyurethane. You obviously have to have a gun. There's, nobody needs all these guns, but if you have a favorite, gun, favorite glue, you will need your, the gun for that glue. And of course, your mixing cannules. I like to mix metacrylates uh, in, uh, by hand, like Equilox and stuff like that, so I, have, I love these little uh, um, ice cream uh, beakers, you know, little cups, because they are smooth and they're low, so you can really mix them in nicely. The wrapping, you need the wrapping tape to wrap everything tight and let it set, and to get that loose you can use a, a carpet cutter or you can use a, a good pair of scissors. And then finally we need some carrots for the horse. The first step of course to put on the any glue on shoe or any or the iron block in specific, is to trim the horse. Here we have a horse who has, a, uh, who has been shot in the past. You can still see the nail holes, but it's already a month or two that he hasn't had shoes on. It's pretty dry here in the summer, so this is a nice, these are nice and dry hooves, which helps. But we'll see later that if they're not dry enough, you have to dry them with a heat gun. You can trim the horse with your traditional tools, nippers and rasp and knives. And this is what I'm going to do on this first left four. This demo has been made in Tuscany in the summer, so that explains the, the dry conditions of the hoof. On the other side, the terrain is very rocky and rough, so the horse is going to benefit from this glue-on shoe which is also flexible and shock absorbing. After cleaning the hoof well for the glue on job, you want to protect the coronary band with duct tape so that if there is a drop of hot glue or something, it doesn't come in contact with the with the soft tissues. Then you choose your size 
and the, the way you're going to positioning your shoe. So you might decide this is a horse which has a fairly low sloped hoof, so a fairly sh sharp angle between this dorsal hoof wall and the sole. So we might want to set it back slightly, the shoe. Then you can, might, might want to decide that you don't want the dorsal clips or cuffs on it. So you cut them away so that you can position the shoe slightly backward. You use your heat gun to remove the manufacturer's inside layer of the of the polyurethane iron block shoe. So it's important that just before putting them on, you give it a, a good passage on the inside, on the glue side of the of the glue on shoe of the iron block. And of course, you want to dry the hoof wall. You want to do this always because all glues release heat when setting. And this drives out the superficial humidity out of the uh, upper surfaces, the outer surfaces of the hoof wall. And this might make a little layer of perspiration, which goes and, 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 and sits between the wall and the glue, and you don't want that. After applying the nozzle, you throw out a little bit of the beginning of the glue so that you're sure that they're well mixed, the two components. You apply a little bit of glue on the upper surface of the toe area of the shoe. On this first shoe, we're gonna use Adhere as the glue, a polyurethane, which is well known. You ask uh, the owner to assist you or an assistant to assist you. When you apply the glue, it's on the cuffs. You wanna keep the cuffs horizontal so that the glue goes on a, the horizontal so you, you, you tip the shoe so that your glue stays where you want it on the cuff side, on the inner side. Then you place your shoe onto the hoof. And this is very important. You have to make sure that you wrap with your shrink wrap at least 10 turns of your shrink wrap from the bulbs to the toe of the shoe. This makes, this makes sure that your shoe will not travel forward when you do the diagonally uh, wrapping, which is going to fix the shoe temporarily to the hoof. So at least 10 wraps, depending on the strength of your shrink wrap, between the bulbs and the toe. And that is the moment that you take your time to make sure that the shoe is not twisted, that it's well positioned before you go on to fix it with diagonal wrapping. Diagonal wrapping is, in my technique, it's, it goes from the lateral heel to the medial toe three times, and then you cross over to the medial heel, outer toe three times, and so on. You do this for 20, 30 wraps, again, depending on the strength in microns, it's advisable to have a shrink wrap, which is at least 23, 25 micron in strength. Then set down the hoof so that while the glue is still uh, soft, it settles perfectly under the weight of the horse and you can pick up the contralateral hoof and start trimming that. On the second hoof, I'm going to use the disc grinder, the battery driven disc grinder for the, for the preparation, the prep of the hoof. And I am using these fear discs, which are mounted on a ventilated click on system on a ventilated disc holder. So it never heats up the, the, the hoof or, or causes overheating or anything like that. It's a, uh, the horses get quickly used to this. If you, um, if you 
light up your machine for a little while and get get them used to the to the noise, which is anyway less than most disc grinders, which are not bad for a driven. And uh, it's a extremely quick method of prepping the hoof. Again, you choose your size and you choose whether you are going to use the dorsal clips or not for the positioning of your shoe. The ideal positioning of the shoe depends on the type of hoof, on the type of terrain, on, on your knowledge of the horse. You prep your shoe with a heat gun, you prep your hoof depending on the humidity. Again, it's this polyurethane is a bit more liquid and fluid than that here. So you really want to use that technique in which you keep the cuff part horizontal so that your glue doesn't run. And it's basically more important to get it on the upper side of the cuff than down below. It tends to go down anyways into the shoe. Place your shoe, start wrapping bulb to toe so that it keeps in position. Take your time after you have done the first wraps from bulbs to toe of the shoe to make sure that your shoe is not twisted, that it's in the right position and then go on to fix it diagonally. You set down the hoof so that the hoof is well settled into the shoe with the weight of the horse on it. You can remove the shrink wrap once the glue has set with a pair of snub nose sharp shears or with a carpet cutter. In these images you see it done with a shear, with, with scissors. You then remove the shrink wrap and the duct tape. You can then clean up the dorsal aspect of the shoeing and the hoof with your rasp and also make the transition from the cuffs to the hoof wall a little bit smoother. As you can see, these hind hooves are fairly worn. There is not too much there. And if you're going to use your disc grinder on them, make sure that your assistant when you're working on the hind limbs, holds the tail away from the disc grinder so that you don't get accidents with the tail being wrapped up into the grinder. If you decide to leave the dorsal clips or the dorsal cuff part on for extra gluing surface, and that might be recommendable on some hind feet, you do want to make a little space. You want to grind a little surface for the, for the clips for the dorsal cuff. So as not because the dorsal hoof wall is fairly thick usually in a, in a sound hoof and <clears throat> you don't want to get the shoe too far forward because it's just like shoeing uh, with a normal steel clip. You want to make a little space for your dorsal clips. In this case, you just it was just ground into place. A very important detail when gluing on the hind limbs is that as when you flex a joint on the hind limb, like the hawk, everything will flex. And the more you flex it, the more also the fetlock will flex, is that your assistant keeps the limb slightly extended, so not too flexed. In other words, you can notice here that the thigh of the assistant is pushing the fetlock forward a bit so as to keep it from flexing too much because you want the pastern to be fairly free so that you can get with your shrink wrap behind the bulbs of the hind limb. In this last hind limb, 
I'm opting again for taking the clips off just to, for, to show you the different possibilities relative to the other hind limb. And I'm opting in this last limb for a polymethyl metacrylate, P-A-M-M-A, like Equilox or uh, there's many of them. And in, these, in this case, I don't like to use the mixing tips. I like to, since the proportions of in metacrylates of the, the base material relative to the hardener are not one to one usually, they're one to four or one to 10. I, I prefer to, to throw it out of the, the, the cartridge immediately, directly into a little ice cream cup. They have smooth, the ice cream cups are ideal because they're smooth on the inside and they're low. And with a, with a little mixing, with a little tongue depressor or wooden tongue depressor, which I'm cut off square at the end, I mix it and I can make sure that there is the right proportion of hardener into the base material. So I mix it up by hand thoroughly, and then I put it on the upper sides of the cuffs and a little bit on the toe, on the upper surface of the toe. Again, notice how the assistant is pushing a bit to, onto the fetlock so that the limb is a bit extended, not totally flexed. This makes it easier to wrap from the bulbs to the toe of the shoe. In this case, it's also interesting to note that the shoe, when it's a bit wider than the hoof, it has no bars, so it's, it's, a, it's not a bar shoe. So it's very easy to accommodate it to the different shape of the hoof relative to the shoe. You can also opt for after your first bulb to toe wraps, you can you can and positioning and, and making sure that it's well positioned the shoe and that it's not turned or twisted. You can also go and do five to ten wraps heel to heel so as to narrow the shoe and get it to closely adhere to the heels. And then finally you finish it up by your diagonal wrapping outside toe, inside toe, inside heel, outside toe. Instead of scissors or shears, you can use a carpet cutter to remove the wrap. You know, a little hook knife. If there are blobs of glue which went below the shoe and onto the sole, you can remove them with your hoof knife. As you can see in this case, this is the left hind. The outside heel is a little bit turned in. So the, the shoe, the heels of the shoe might be laying partially over the sulci, the lateral and medial sulcus of the frog. And you can mark them with a felt tip and then uh, free them up by cutting them off with a half round and with a hoof knife or with a trimming knife. So total shoeing time in this horse was one hour. So it's about the same as I take for a normal shoeing. And you can see from these, we put them away for half an hour, had a coffee. And just to film these last uh, images of the horse in movement. And um, as you can see in the Tuscan countryside in front of the stables is full of rocks and stones and how they really grip also when 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 he comes to a stop. It's, this is the nice part of these shoes. They have a more flexible protection, especially for rough terrains. 
I think I like that uh, about him.